The FBM KLCI saw an almost 40-point tumble amid uncertainty over the current government's reform plan. Anticipation that the government would devise new taxes and sell assets to reduce debt affected market sentiment. The KLCI closed 38.97 points or 2.2% lower at 1,735.18 points with top decliners including component stocks like Tanaga National, Axiata Group, Genting and Telecom Malaysia. According to CIMB research analyst Ivy Ng Li Fang, the recent conference had made it clear that many ministries were working on potential reforms. She said in her note today that the potential changes could lead to short-term uncertainty but could be positive in the medium to long term. Malacca Security Senior Analyst Kenneth Leong says that external factors also played a role, especially after the IMF reduced its global economic growth forecast. The Malaysian government is not terminating the MRT2 underground work project, rather it is looking for a contractor that can do it cheaper. Political Secretary to the Finance Minister Tony Poa stated this in an open letter to MMC Gamuda KV MRT, the JV between Gamuda and MMC Corp. In the strongly worded letter, Poa says that the government terminated the contract after MMC Gamuda refused to play ball and make further cuts in developing the underground portion of MRT2. Poa cites a study done by an independent engineering consultant which said total savings would be between 4.19 billion and 5.79 billion ringgit for the remaining 60% portion of the works. However, he says that MMC Gamuda only offered to reduce the price to 14.58 billion ringgit for cost savings of only 2.13 billion ringgit. In his letter, Poa also addressed the 20,000 workers who MMC Gamuda said would lose their jobs as a result of the contract termination saying that they would find plenty of new opportunities when the new project is awarded at a lower cost. Both MMC and Gamuda share price continued to slide as investors took the news hard. MMC ended the day 3.45% lower at 1 ringgit 12, while Gamuda dropped 13.03% to close at 2 ringgit and 7 cent. Shareholders of Top Glove Corp have voted to remove Lo Chin Guan as an executive director at its EGM today. This was despite Lo claiming his innocence amid allegations of fraudulent actions related to the acquisition of Aspion. Lo is a director in Aspion's former parent, Adventa Capital. Lo was not present at the EGM today, but a letter from him was read out to the shareholders. Top Glove chairman Tan Sri Lim Mui Chai had proposed Lo's removal after the glove maker filed a lawsuit against Adventa upon discovering financial irregularities in its balance sheet. Lim says that it was not easy to have discovered the financial irregularities despite the due diligence done before the 1.37 billion ringgit acquisition as they were very good at manipulating the financial statements. Top Glove is seeking 714.85 million ringgit from Adventa, Lo, Wong Chin To and ACPL. According to reports, Lo has vowed to hold Top Glove responsible for any losses he or Adventa may suffer as a result of the suit. LPI Capital saw a slight contraction of 0.4% in net profit for the third quarter of FY18 to 91.81 million ringgit as top line dropped. Revenue for the quarter fell 4% from 406.79 million to 390.59 million ringgit due to a decline in gross earned premium from its general insurance. In a bourse filing, LPI said the decline was mainly due to a one off release of unearned premium reserves of 54.5 million ringgit recorded last year. LPI founder and chairman Tan Sri Dr. Te Hong Piao says that 2018 continues to be a challenging year for the Malaysian general insurance industry amid volatile global economic conditions. He says that on the domestic front, the property market has not recovered from the oversupply and weak demand position, while major infrastructure projects have been under review affecting demand. As a result, the Malaysian general insurance industry reported just 0.7% growth in its gross premium written for the first half of 2018. For the cumulative nine months, LPI's net profit was flat at 230.1 million ringgit, while revenue increased 1.6% to 1.12 billion ringgit. Malaysia could see a flurry of M&A activities in the coming months as the government pairs down its direct ownership in companies to raise funds, according to CIMB IB's chief executive, Dato Kong Sui Lin. Kong says that bankers see opportunities in transactions that could emerge from Kazana National's portfolio rebalancing or at other GLCs, according to Reuters. 
She says that foreign firms are beginning to make queries looking for good assets to buy in Malaysia. Kong says that while there has been no indication as to which sectors Kazana would focus on to rebalance its portfolio, it won't be a cheap sale. Kazana owns significant stakes in some of the country's largest companies such as CIMB, Tenaga National, Axiata Group and IHH Healthcare. Kong says that other promising sectors are consumer, healthcare, e-commerce and logistics, while consolidation in the oil and gas sector is also likely.